Hey, I'm Bob and I like to make stuff. Today I'm gonna make a canoe paddle. I started by taking a chunk off of this really big piece of basswood. Basswood is great because it's really dense, but it's also lightweight, so it's really good for something that you're gonna be moving around like a paddle. I cut off a section to use for the main shaft, all the way from the handle, all the way down to the tip. This piece was really thick, so I had to make one cut, flip the piece over, and make a second cut on the opposite side to get all the way through. Then I ran it over the joiner to get the outsides flat for the glue up. I found some scraps of other woods, some of which were warped, but it doesn't really matter because for the fins, I just need some small strips. I cut down some walnut, some maple, and some scrap teak that I had. I laid all the strips out in a few different orientations and finally found one that I was happy with. Then it was time to do the glue up. And for this, I used a regular wood glue that's waterproof, and not all of it is, so make sure you check your bottle. I spread on lots of glue and made sure to wipe it all the way to the edge of all the surfaces so that there were no gaps in the glue up. And when I glued them up, I tried to center all the pieces so that I could taper them the same from each side of the paddle. After both of those fins were dried, I pulled them out of the clamps and then glued them up to the main shaft. I did the same thing here, used the same glue, spread it all the way to the edges, and then attached both of the fin pieces to the main shaft. And when I clamped this up, tried to make sure that the fins were centered within the main piece. I left that to dry overnight to make sure that all the glue was cured on this entire thing and then took it out of the clamps. From there, I drew a line down the center of the piece of basswood and then rolled out a piece of brown paper to make a template. You can use any kind of paper for this as long as it's wider than the piece of wood that you're going to use it on. After I got it folded in half, I laid that folded line on the center line of my basswood and taped it in place. Then I just started drawing out the profile of the paddle. I figured out how wide I wanted the shaft of this to be and made some marks at that point and then just kind of sketched a handle from there. There was definitely some trial and error here, not having any idea what that shape should really look like. I used a ruler to draw a straight line for the shaft and then freehanded the end of the paddle. Of course, there's a bunch of different shapes you could make for the paddle and a lot of that has to do with how and where you're going to use the canoe. After I got a shape that I was happy with, I used some scissors to cut along that line and actually smooth out my drawing line a little bit to make the template. Once I had it completely cut out, I just unfolded it and you could see the final shape of the canoe paddle. I tried to work out the crease to make sure that it would lay flat and then I covered one side of it with a light coat of Super 77, which is spray adhesive. This makes it really easy to stick it down to my blank to cut it out. I laid it in place, trying to make sure that I lined up the fold with the center line that I had drawn on the basswood earlier. When I did the glue up, I made sure that the fins were not flat to the table, but instead centered on the piece of basswood. This is great for shaping, but actually bad for cutting it out on the bandsaw. So I added some spacers with some CA glue to the outside of the fins to make it more stable to push through the bandsaw to cut out. And once I had these in place, I just cut along the outside of the template. I did try my best to stay right on the line of the template, but this is gonna get a ton of shaping later, so it doesn't have to be perfectly exact. I actually spent more time trying to make sure that the line along the shaft was straight, just for a point of reference. And also, the blade that I keep on my bandsaw most of the time is not really great for tight turns. So I just had to do a little bit of extra work to get inside the handle corner. Once I got it shaped, I just pulled off the template, which came off really easily because I only put a light coating of the spray adhesive.
Then it was time to finally start shaping it. I wanted the shaft of this to be about one inch around, so I left the whole basswood section a little bit thicker, but on the paddle, the basswood needed to be cut down to meet everything else. I actually was able to set this on top of the fence for my bandsaw and trim off that excess just up to where the fin stopped. I just cut those pieces straight off because I knew I would transition it later on as I started shaping the fin. Then I took everything outside because the next part was extremely messy. The simplest way to carve this down would be to use one of the special carving heads that you would put in a grinder, but I don't have one of those, so I'm going to use a flap disc. I used a 60 grit and a 40 grit flap disc on two different sized grinders to get the shape that I wanted. I also made sure to go back and remark the center line of the fin so I could keep that as a high point. And then I just jumped into shaping, not really having any idea of the best way to go about it. I started by rounding over the edges on each side and then flipping it over to try to make them meet up in the center of the fin. I tried to make some steps from the surface of the fin up to the outside of the shaft that I could smooth out into a ramp later on. This video is sponsored by Casper, which is fantastic because they're a company that I really believe in. In fact, everybody in my house sleeps on a Casper mattress. We've had them for a long time. They're fantastic, they're comfortable, and they're easy to try out in your own house. They send you the mattress in a box. You get to open it and sleep on it in your bed for 100 nights, and if you don't like it for any reason, they come get it and take it away, and they give you your money back, no questions asked. They've actually got the original Casper, the Wave, and the Essential, so there's different mattresses for you to check out, and they also sell sheets and pillows and a bunch of other stuff. If you want to find out more and get $50 off a select mattress, go to casper.com slash ILTMS and use the code ILTMS. Go check them out. They're a fantastic company and really, really comfortable mattresses. Thanks, Casper. Once I started to get a better feel for how the grinder was going to take off material, I switched back and forth between the larger and the smaller grinder and the different grits of flap disc. I ended up using a rasp in the corner around the handle because it was a tighter radius and it was easier to clean up with that. This also made it a lot easier to transition some of the different lines that I had made on the shaft into more of a cylinder. Of course it wasn't a perfect cylinder, but it didn't really need to be. And the closer I got to the final shape, the less pressure I put on the grinder and made light passes so it didn't take off as much material. Eventually, I got really close and moved on to a palm sander. This made it a lot easier to get the final surface that I wanted. And from there on, it was a combination of moving back and forth between the grinder with light passes and back to the sander. The grinder was really good for helping me transition all of the surfaces between the different planes, and the sander was great for getting the edge that I wanted around the outside of the fin. I used the palm sander to shape the handle as much as I could, but eventually had to move on to sandpaper to get the shape just right and get it nice and smooth to the touch. When it comes to finishing a canoe paddle, there's tons of conflicting information online and I really don't know what to do. A lot of people will varnish just the end of it and then oil the handle so you don't get blisters. The only thing I have on hand that's gonna work is this spar urethane. So I'm gonna use this, it may not be the best choice, it's what I'm gonna use for my first paddle. If you go to make one of these and you want it to last for a really long time, do some research because there are a ton of options for finishing this. So the first step here is to take off all the dust with a tack cloth. I used the force to lay this down on some wax paper before I put on the finish so it wouldn't get on my table. I mixed this stuff up because it does glob at the bottom of the can, and once it was nice and mixed, I put on a really thin layer and let it dry. I did this one side at a time, and once it dried, I flipped it over and did the other side. Like most finishes, this definitely raised the grain of the wood, so I went back over it with a 220 grit and it got it completely smooth. This made a huge difference to the final finish of the whole paddle. Also, I hung this by the handle to do the second coat, and it was much easier that way. And after that dried, it was completely finished, and it was time to try it out. Given that I didn't have any idea what I was doing, this thing worked out pretty well. It works great on the water. I will probably have to add some more finish because it is getting kind of roughed up on the rocks, but that's just what happens when you use something. 
I'd love to know what you think about this one. Let me know down in the comments. I've got lots of other types of projects that you may be interested in. Check those out and don't forget to subscribe. That's it for this one, guys. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.